So I tried to fix it, but the channel of six goes it, and then I couldn't find it. And then, so I found it, and that was amazing. So look, I love you. We'll start now. Om Agyanti Milandasya Gyanan Jana Shala Gaya Chakshurun Militam Yenitasme Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yenam Puti Swayam Rupa Padamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yotapadakamadam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tamsa Jeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Sapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishubhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripri Vancha Kalpataru Bhesha Kripa Sindhu Be Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhya Vaishnavi Bhya Namadamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasadi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda, Nama Mishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutali, Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunne Vadi Paschatya Deshatarine, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Mukham, Karoti Vachalam, Pangum Langaite, Girim Yet Kripata, Mahamban, Shri Gurundina Tarinam, Paraman and the Madhavam, Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram. Okay, um, we are starting Madhya Leela today. Um, we are starting with the third chapter and the reason is um, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami mentions the, the summary of the Madhya Leela in the first chapter. And he mentions the summary of Antya Leela in the second chapter. And at the end of second chapter, Krishna's Kavirat Goswami explains, just like Shri Prabhupada did, that I don't know how much time I have and if I will be able to um, finish details of Madhya Leela and Antya Leela. Um, but if I leave my body in between, then please refer to the synopsis and um, that will give us a overall idea um, and then he says that now i will try to describe as long as i live by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he was allowed to describe all the Madhya Lila and Antya Lila in details um, so beginning from where we left off Adi Lila last part was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepting the sannyas order of life um, Thousands of people there, everybody opposed. Mahaprabhu requested Mukunda. Mukunda was there. Um, um, childhood friend of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
Nityananda Prabhu was there and Acharya Ratna, who was maternal uncle of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. These three were there. Acharya Ratna performed the uh, um, participated in the sacrifice as a witness. Um, um, Kesha Bharati received love of Godhead by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We saw his own ecstasy. Mahaprabhu being very pleased. Um, then took sannyas from Keshav Bharati. Keshav Bharati and the samadhi of Keshav Bharati and the samadhi of the barber who cut Mahaprabhu's hair is there in Katwa where Mahaprabhu took sannyas. And then this pastime came to an end. Mahaprabhu has already finished 24 years and now the last 24 years. Uh, um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, along with Mukunda Mukunda Dutt Nityanda Prabhu and uh, um, Acharya Ratna left from Katwa and Mahaprabhu had an intense desire to go to Vrindavan. Mahaprabhu is trying to go to Vrindavan since long even when Mahaprabhu took Diksha um, initiation from Ishwar Puri in Gaya. We saw that on that night Mahaprabhu left the place where he was staying in Gaya wanted to go to Vrindavan and then he heard a celestial voice um, you will certainly go to Vrindavan but you have a mission to fulfill um, and then Mahaprabhu became pacified and he went back and now he thought now is the time I'll go to Vrindavan. Many attempts Mahaprabhu will make and we will see till Probably 10 chapters from now, Mahaprabhu will not be able to go to Vrindavan. Then he will go. Uh, Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda All glories to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Charya. All glories to devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Chobisa Vatsara Sesha E Maghamas Tara Shukla Pakshe Prabhu Karila Sanyas At the end of his 24th year in the month of Magh, um, which is the month of March, month of Magh, February, March, um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the Sanyas. So, continuing from, from previous discussion, Sanyasa Kari. Prema Vesha Chalila Vrindavan Radha Desha Tina Dina Karila Brahman Lord Chaitanya out of intense love Prema Vesh out of intense love Chalila Vrindavan he started for Vrindavan um, Radha Desha Tina Dina Karila Brahman Brahman means he kept on spending moving here and there in Radha Desh um, Radha Desh is uh, western side of Bengal. Actually, Prabhupada mentions the name was initially Rashtra Desh. Rashtra means state. So west part of Bengal was called Rashtra, Rashtra Desh. Later on, um, it started, came to be known as Radha Desh. So Radha Desh, Tina Dina, Karila Brahman. Um, mistakenly, he wandered in Bengal for three days, although he started for Vrindavan. Passing through the tract of land known as Radha Deshi Chatne Mahaprabhu recited the following verse in ecstasy. Recently, I was also hearing a lecture by my spiritual master, and he said that as soon as Sri Chatne Mahaprabhu took sannyas, he recited a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, this verse comes in the pastime of Avanti Brahman. Those who don't know about Avanti Brahman, he was a um, 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 a landlord. He used to give money, take interest, and uh, he was very um, miserly. So even his own family members and others, when they would ask for anything, 
he would not give them anything everybody would live in poverty and he was very peculiar with his wealth um and nobody would like him because of his nature and by the will of the providence it so happened that he lost all his money and he became a beggar and uh, because nobody liked him already when he was a wealthy man now after he became a beggar he was severely neglected and he became very frustrated with his life and he took sanyas um, but as he took sanyas um, he chanted the names of murari mukunda um, and slowly slowly his heart became to become purified he developed lot of tolerance he started seeing everything as the mercy of the lord and over period of time as a sanyasi his heart became completely transformed to such an extent that but people still thinking him to be an old man they would criticize him um, um when he would beg they would uh, reject him and if at all he get any food they would come and pass urine in his plate and they would uh, scorn him with harsh words so they heavily uh, treated him um, in a very condemned way and uh, avanti brahman um going through lot of difficulties lot of difficulties um he did not find fault in any of the people but he saw that my own karma is coming back to me and he said actually the cause of my suffering later on he said the cause of my suffering is actually not my karma also i mean the situation is arranged because of my own karma but my suffering is not because of my own karma um 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 my suffering is not because of other people my suffering is not because of my family members my suffering is not because i don't have uh, food or wealth my suffering is not because of anything but my suffering is because of my mind he is my only enemy so very beautiful prayers these are the prayers of avanti brahmana that when somebody takes sanyas they every day recite the prayers of avanti brahma that's what my spiritual master said um, in the lecture because the prayers because sanyasi means mendicant mendicant means go from home to home and beg and sometimes he is rejected sometimes uh, he is well received um, 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 and uh, avanti brahman was a sanyasi a kridanda sanyasi and he would go and beg and he was very harshly received so sometimes people who take sanyas not in iskon not our tradition in iskon is um, very different but um, a regular sanyasi um, they would uh, take shelter of avanti brahman and there is this one prayer that avanti brahman sang which uh, mahaprabhu uh, recited um, stamping the authenticity of the prayers of avanti brahman otherwise why would shri chaitanya mahaprabhu recite it um as a brahman of avanti desh he was a brahman he was from the place called avanti the village called avanti so that's why he is called avanti brahman as a brahman from avanti desh said mahaprabhu reciting it when he was wandering like a mendicant i shall cross over the insurmountable ocean of nescience um by being firmly fixed in the service of the lotus feet of krishna this was approved by the previous acharyas who were fixed in firm devotion to the lord parmatma the supreme personality of god it so basic understanding is no matter how people deal with me um what success i have what failures i have uh how much suffering i have or how much enjoyment i have as a mendicant um no matter how my days goes good or bad i will be able to cross over the cycle of birth and death if i hold on to the lotus feet of mukunda to the lotus feet of krishna um and prabhupa says there the main business of sanyasi is to devote one's mind body and life completely in the service of lord mukunda it's not the dress but the attitude of service anybody prabhupa used to say anybody whose body is used in serving krishna mind is used in serving krishna 
life is used in serving Krishna, he is as good as sannyasi. Sannyasi is not sannyasi state of consciousness. Sannyas, um, it's not a grace. Prabhupada used to say, um, Brahmachari grihastha sannyasi. Prabhupada used to say, those who are not engaged in sense gratification and strictly work. Um, for the pleasure of Krishna and do everything for the pleasure of Krishna, they are called grahastha sannyasis. Anybody who takes shelter of Mukunda, no matter how difficult their life is, they'll be able to cross over the cycle of birth and death, the ocean of nations. So Mahaprabhu approved it and he used to recite, he started reciting this verse after he took sannyas. Ashi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was en route to Vrindavan all the ecstatic symptoms became manifest. Just the thought that I'm going to Vrindavan, he became ecstatic. And he did not know in which direction he was going. He became so absorbed um, in his own mood. Um, Radha Bhava Duty so a little Naomi Krishna Sarupam. He became so absorbed, he did not know where he was going, which direction he was going. Nor did he know whether it was day or night. He was completely absorbed. He stopped begging also. He did not eat for these three days. No food. He just kept on absorbing, absorbed in Krishna and kept on walking towards the way to Vrindavan. Um, and while walking, Nityananda Acharya Ratna Mukunda Tina Jana Prabhu Pache Pache Tina Karena Gamana Wherever Sri Chitra Mahaprabhu went, Gamana, wherever he moved, Nityananda Acharya Ratna and Mukunda um, they came pache pache. They came behind him. They were following uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, and Mahaprabhu was completely lost in his own ecstasies. Mahaprabhu, as he was walking, he induced everyone to chant Hari Hari. Anybody Mahaprabhu would saw on the way in complete ecstatic mood, he would smile, big, give a big smile on his face and greet anybody on the way with the name Hari Hari. Um, in this way, they would also, in this way, they would also recite Hari Hari to greet because Lord is a sannyasi. Um, he said Hari Hari. Everybody said Hari Hari. So just by them reciting Hari Hari with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Lord diminished their unhappiness due to material existence. They all felt relieved from their, from their heavy karma and they felt uh, divinity in their heart just by uh, chanting Hari Hari with the Lord. And when Mahabrabhu saw the small boys, those who place the cowherd boys, when he saw all the cowherd boys also chanting Hari Hari. So throughout Mahaprabhu, whenever he would saw anybody, he would chant Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari. And these boys, they also in fun, they would chant Hari Hari with him. Um, he would approach them and then while putting his hand on their head saying go on chanting like this Mahabrabhu will go put his hand like a blessing onto the cowherd boys small cowherd boys and say go on chanting keep reciting hari hari um, and would derive great satisfaction by doing that and when Mahaprabhu would give anybody the holy name hari hari um, when they would recite and when Mahaprabhu see that they have become happy by chanting hari hari Mahaprabhu become greatly satisfied. One of the prayer of Queen Kunti in Srimad Bhagavatam says that those who take pleasure in hearing and chanting and those who take even more pleasure in seeing others hearing and chanting, those who take pleasure by seeing others hearing and chanting, for them, um, back to God it is guaranteed. Uh, so Mahaprabhu in the same way would derive a lot of satisfaction by seeing other becoming ecstatic that is the nature of love when we have we want to see others also experience that um, nityananda called the cowherd boys in confidence and nitai would walk behind and when he would see some boys so what mahaprabhu would do as he was walking he would not ask nityananda acharya ratna or mukunda he would ask people on the streets on the way, where is the way to Vrindavan? So Nityananda saw that he is asking all these cowherd boys, where is the way to Vrindavan? So when any cowherd boys in the front, Nitai would go and confidentially talk to them 
if the sanyasi chaitanya mahaprabhu if he asks where is uh, vrindavan show him the way to the ganges in to the, the ganga in shantipur so nitai he called the cowherd boys in confidence and instructed them if sri chaitanya mahaprabhu asks for path to vrindavan show him the path to the bank bank of ganges instead the boys did that and the lord continued in all ecstasy and the boy said here is vrindavan also vrindavan was there and mahaprabhu believed them he doesn't know where is he i mean in his manifest past times he sarvagya but he doesn't know where where he is it is day or it is night and he continued his own ecstasies and he just kept on walking as uh, um boys instructed them then as shantipur was not so far already t- three days passed actually it does not take so much time to go from katwa to shantipur uh, but lord was doing gamana he was going here and there and so absorbed in his own ecstasies uh, now vrindavan takes actually a long time but mahaprabhu lost track of time also um, whether it is uh, day or night he lost track so um, when nitananda prabhu understood that we are not far away from shantipur and from mayapur then nitananda prabhu asked acharya ratna who was the brother of sachi mata uh, maternal uncle of sachi mata he said acharya ratna ji um, go to advait acharya tell him that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is coming to shantipur and ask him to wait with a boat on the bank of ganges and then go to navadi um tell sachi mata and all the devotees murari gupta and uh, um all the devotees there to come to um uh, to come to shantipur lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is coming to shantipur so saying this acharya ratna left so lord nitananda then told acharya ratna i shall go to advaita acharya's house um and you should go to navadi and return with mother sachin all other devotees also inform advait acharya to stay at the shore with the boat um to cross the ganga stay with the boat nitananda prabhu went before the lord went before lord chaitanya and gave the notice of his coming so nitai started walking ahead of lord chaitanya and acharya ratna some time back he instructed and he already left but mahaprabhu is fully absorbed in his ecstasy thinking i am going to vrindavan then ma prabhu noticed prabhu kahe shripa tomar kotha ke gamana shripa da kahe tomara sange ya ba vrindavana shri chaitanya ma shri chaitanya ma prabhu was in ecstasy and he asked where nitanda prabhu was going when he saw nita is going ahead where are you going nitanda prabhu replied that he was going with him toward vrindavan my lord you are going to vrindavan i am also going to vrindavan प्रभु कहे कटा दूर आछे वृंदावन ते हो कहे न कारा ये यमुना दर्शन व्हेन द लॉर्ड आस्क कटा दूर आछे वृंदावन देन चिजने मां प्रभु आस्क हाउ फार आर वी स्टिल फ्रॉम वृंदावन अम ते हो कहे न कारा ये यमुना दर्शन nitanand replied just see here is the river yamuna actually they they came to the bank of ganga and um, um, nitai said my lord this is yamuna <laughs> we have reached vrindavan just now <laughs> mahaprabhu was completely lost uh, and just now he just now he said yeah i am coming with you to vrindavan where is vrindavan yeah we have reached vrindavan <laughs> this is vrindavan this this river you see this is yamuna <laughs> and mahaprabhu believed nitanand <laughs> prabhu <clears throat> saying this nityananda prabhu took chaitanya mahaprabhu near the ganges and the lord in his ecstasy mahaprabhu thought this is yamuna accepted the river ganga as river yamuna thus lord chaitanya began to offer prayers to it so there is one beautiful verse that is a prayer that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu personally recited to glorify yamuna so we will see that prayer 
चिदानंद भानु सदानंद सुनो पर प्रेम पात्री द्रव ब्रह्म गात्री अघ नाम लवित्री जग क्षेमा धात्री पावित्री क्रियो नो बापुर मित्र पुत्री सो वी विल स्पेंड फाइव फाइव मिनट्स ऑन दिस वर्स इट सेल्फ टू अंडरस्टैंड यमुना एट सम प्लेसेस व्हेन महाप्रभु गोस टू वृंदावन और सच टाइम वी विल डिस्कस समथिंग मोर ऑन दो सब्जेक्ट मैटर सो समथिंग ऑन यमुना टूडे um um first i will read the translation then i will say something more about it o river yamuna you are the blissful spiritual water that gives love to the son of nanda maharaj you are same as the water of the spiritual world for you can vanquish all our offenses and the sinful reactions incurred in life you are the creator of all auspicious things for the world o daughter of the sun god kindly purify us by your pious activities <coughs> okay so we will go maybe slowly in the verse again one word um is vapur mitra putri like if you remember mana siksha ninth verse raguna das goswami says worship yamuna he says worship lalita vishakha and we discussed about how yamuna is the second body of vishakha devi in golok vrindavan uh, from radharani comes vishakha and vishakha assist in loving past times in amorous past times of radha and krishna um, and she also assist in amorous past times of radha and krishna through the yamuna yamuna is black color and black color signifies uh, um uh, amorous past times black color um some saints say um levishna chakravarti tago describes yamuna as maskara around vrindavan just like in the eyes there is maskara likewise he describe yamuna is like maskara um yamuna is extremely eager to serve krishna uh now Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu calls Yamuna as Vapur Mitra Putri. Putri means daughter. Uh, Mitra Putri is referring to um, you are daughter of Sun God, Sun God. So, um, how can Yamuna be from Golok Vrindavan, expansion of Vishakha, at the same time daughter of Sun God? um so rupa goswami describes um that vishakha devi eternally shrimati radhadani's friend expanded herself and took birth as the daughter of sun god so um there are two vishakha one is daughter of sun god one is um um radhadani's expansion vishakha from golok vrindavan Mm. the daughter of sun god just like if you remember to the sea came to this material world and when she came because of her spontaneous attraction to krishna she performed severe austerities to have vishnu as her husband on a similar note sun god um, daughter vishakha her natural love awakened for narayan um so she wanted to perform she started performing austerities to have narayan as her husband she came to a forest called khandaha near delhi and uh, she started performing severe austerities and crying in ecstasy to have vishnu as her husband uh, from her tears um, a lake was formed that many long austerity sun god was aware um sun god uh, um approved of it and uh, within the lake which was formed which is in kandaha which was formed by the tears of um this demi god vishakha um under the lake sun god built a palace so she would live under the lake in a palace built by sun god for her daughter uh, little vishakha um and she was performing intense austerities um under the lake um 
on the other hand in golok vrindavan krishna instructed yamuna devi and krishna instructed govardhan go to vrindavan i am going to come with shrimati radharani all my associates um, you go first so yamuna devi received the instruction um, and she started flowing towards um, um bhoma vrindavan bhoma vrindavan arthli vrindavan she yamuna devi ganga devi on the way also requested yamuna devi can i join can i participate in golok past times of krishna come on in so they both joined together and then there is a viraja river viraja river is the um river outside of entire cosmic creation viraja river if you know that map material world spiritual world and entire spiritual world discovered by viraja river so viraja also requested viraja is a gopi viraja is um a gopi from golok vrindavan um and there is a story behind uh, where radharani told viraja to um become the water around uh, um the whole uh, spiritual existence so viraja also said can i participate in krishna's past times so yamuna said come on in so all three yamuna her sister ganga and viraja they all three combined together and they started flowing towards the material universes and she was traveling around the universes and then she happened to found a hole to enter the universe because the universe is like packed nothing can enter so this hole was created by lord vamandev ganga was already flowing um um through that hole when vamandev took the third step he created a hole in the universe and then ganga entered taking the opportunity and washed the feet of um, um vamandev and then there is a whole story of how ganga flew so yamuna finding that spot taking permission from ganga devi started flowing along with uh, ganga so although this yamuna is a combined of ganga and viraja they all three are flowing and join the course of ganga so they came down they came on the top of mount sumeru um mount they first went through dhruvaloka which is the um place of shiro dakshay vishnu shweta dweep and then they came through uh, mount sumeru not going in detail of creation um then through all the heavenly planets and then uh, yamuna devi came 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 all the way through um hastinapur near delhi and there she met with um um her own expansion vishaka um um and met with her lake which was made of tears from vishaka so she joined hand there she joined hands there um she wanted viraja uh, sorry demi goddess vishaka daughter of sun god wanted to serve in krishna's past times in vrindavan and in dwarka so the water merged with vishaka and went to go to vrindavan and later on um many years later one time krishna came with arjuna and uh, to hastinapur um uh, during mahabharat war at that time uh, arjuna went to drink some water nearby and then there he met uh, this kalindi kalindi is another name of um the demi goddess the daughter of sun god or another name of yamuna is kalindi kalindi yamuna teri um um this sing this song uh, radha krishna pran mora jugal kishor there also the word kalindi comes so another name for yamuna is kalindi so kalindi came out and she told arjuna that uh, i want to marry krishna um and arjuna went and he told krishna there is daughter of sun god she is doing tapasya to have you as her husband um krishna accepted her hand and then krishna took her to um, um dwarka krishna has total 16108 queens among those among them 16100 were um the queens under Nala, narakasura whom krishna relieved and married them and eight were 
um, among eight, one of them was Kalindi. One of them was Satya Bama. One of them was Rukmini. One of them was Jambavati. So like that, one of them was Kalindi. So she assisted in Goloka pastimes and through her water, which is her own expansion, she came to Vraja, Vrindavan. Um, the water, just like Krishna never leaves Vrindavan, original Yamuna Devi never leaves Vrindavan. It is described that uh, um, the water in Delhi and other parts of India where Yamuna flows is only an expansion of the original Yamuna. Just like Krishna left and it was Vasudev Krishna, Narayan Krishna, but Nandan and Krishna stayed there. Likewise, the original Yamuna stayed in Vrindavan. So it is considered that taking a bath in Yamuna in Golok Vrindavan is way, way, way more purifying and devotional than taking the bath in Yamuna in any other place in India. It's not the same. <clears throat> um, and Yamuna Devi eagerness to serve Krishna is unlimited, unlimited. Um, um, everywhere Krishna goes, like Krishna has pastimes with the gopas, with the gopis, with the cows, all the pastimes are contained in Yamuna. In the beginning, Krishna was in Gol Krishna was transferred. Sometime I have a desire after Chaitanya Leela to discuss Krishna pastimes in uh, um, uh, in a chronological order to have a deeper feeling of Krishna's pastimes. Um, so right after, very close to Mahavan, uh, sorry, very close to Mathura, is the closest part of Vrindavan to Mathura is actually Gokul Mahavan where uh, um, uh, Vasudev crossed um, Yamuna and he went to a maternity room where Yashoda was lying with her daughter um, um, uh, Yogamaya and then he exchanged Krishna there. So very close is Mahavan. So Yamuna was there in Mathura, Yamuna was there in Mahavan then when Krishna came to Vrindavan, Yamuna came to Vrindavan. And um, 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 when Krishna would go to herd the cows in many places, um, uh, when Krishna came to Nandagram, Nandagaon, the eternal home of Krishna, Yamuna went there. In short, wherever Krishna would go, Mother Yamuna will go along. The desire of Mother Yamuna to serve Krishna is unlimited. If you see throughout the spiritual world, when she comes to earthly planet, she just flows to various places. But when it comes to Vrindavan, she expands in every forest of Vrindavan, in a zig, 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 zig. So if you see in Vrindavan, throughout the journey of Yamuna, the whole, it's a state path going through, going across Delhi, going across Allahabad, going, going across. But when it comes to Vrindavan, she is all over the place in Vrindavan. Wherever Krishna and gopis would go, um, on the way, whenever they would feel thirsty, they all would go to Yamuna and drink their water. The water of Yamuna was described as so nectarian and so scented, fragrant water that it would fully satisfy their um, their thirst. And it was very pleasing to drink. And at other places, it is described when Yamuna was not there, Krishna would play his flute. And from his flute, he would create a kupa, a well. There are many instances in Goloka, Vrindavan, which are called Venukup or the well created by the flute of Krishna. Um, so that is the desire. Um, Badravan, Yamuna would go there. Mahavan, Nandagao, Varsana, Govardhan, Vrindavan, Ramanreti, Sevakunj, you name it. Yamuna is there. So that is the nature and that's why Yamuna pastimes are very very confidential pastimes of the Lord um, in uh, in Golok Vrindavan eternally and we can see that so um, Yamuna Shla Prabhupada says taking a bath in Yamuna is this he quoting Varaha Puran, Varaha Puran. Uh, taking a bath in Yamuna uh, is hundred times more purifying than taking a bath in Ganga that is a position of Yamuna. Um, anywhere else, but taking a bath in Yamuna in um, um, in Vrindavan will award love of God. Last time when I went there, I also, <laughs> the only bath I took in a holy river is in Yamuna. 
uh, because uh, she is she is very compassionate. Now we will go to this verse. First, it says Chidananda Bhanu. Um, 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 Chidananda Bhanu means um, spiritual. Um, Chidananda Bhanu uh, Sadananda Suno. Um, Chid Ananda means she is blissful. Chidananda Bhanu. She is, her water is full of bliss. Um, Sada Nanda Suno Para Prema Patri. So Prabhupada says Para Prema Patri means um, that gives love to the son of Nanda Maharaj. That gives love to the son of Nanda Maharaj. And Prabhupada says there, like it's interesting. It's not she gives love of son of Nanda Maharaj. She gives love to son of Nanda Maharaj. Like devotees, they give others love of Krishna, but she gives loves to Krishna. So it's nice. How she gives loves to Krishna? Um, it is explained in two ways. By, um, by giving Krishna um, um, gopas and gopis and cows um, and Krishna by allowing them to perform pastime, attracting, being always available. So this is one way she gives so much love to Krishna. And another way she gives love to Krishna is by um, purifying conditioned souls and awakening in their heart the love for Krishna. So whatever love um, by offering conditioned souls back to Krishna, she is giving love to Krishna indirectly. Directly through her availability for Lord's pastimes. Indirectly by bringing conditioned souls back to eternal Golok Vindavan. Just like Tulsi Maharani came for the same purpose. Likewise Yamuna Devi descended for the same purpose. And it is also described that um, um, once after 10,000 years, Yamuna Devi will completely disappear and then Ghor Kali will enter. So Yamuna Devi is holding us, Yamuna and Govardhan. These are the two um, um, main um, beings who are still present in Goloka. Krishna left, Radharani left. I mean, they are aprakat. So the past pastimes are going on because Bhama Vrindavan, Goloka Vrindavan, non different, but they are not visible to a conditioned soul. But Yamuna Devi and Govardhan are still visible. Um, that is their mercy. So para prema patri. So in this way, in twofold way, she give love to um, um, Sada Nanda Suno. Suno means son. Nanda Suno is to son of Nanda Baba. Uh, to Krishna, he is giving love. Then Drava Brahma Gatri. Brahma means spiritual. Drava means molten. And Gatri means limbs. So his, her limbs are spiritual. Her limbs is her water. So her uh, limbs are molten and they are spiritual in nature. She does not, I mean, she has a form. At the same time, her limbs are molten. Now, Yamuna Devi always stay there. Um, we cannot see her, but we see in a pastime where Balram wanted to um, teach Yamuna a lesson. Some pastime happened. And uh, Yamuna Devi appeared in person and uh, uh, prayed, offered prayers to Balaram. And Jiva Goswami actually says that was not Yamuna, that was um, an, an expansion of Yamuna. Um, Yamuna is always eager to serve the Lord. Jiva Goswami says that. So her water is spiritual. The water we drink, this is all material water. Um, I mean, when we offer to Krishna, it becomes spiritual water. Any food offered to Krishna becomes spiritual. But otherwise, the water in this world is material and everything in this world is uh, material. But anything used in Krishna's service develops a spiritual quality. But the water of Yamuna is purely spiritual. Likewise, the water of Viraja. Viraja is where Lord Vishnu resides. Um, um, completely spiritual. So... Um, her water is Drava Brahma Gatri. Her water is spiritual. Agha Naam Lavitri. Agha Naam Lavitri means uh, Agha Naam. Prabhupada translates here um, offenses and sinful reaction. This is very interesting. Prabhupada does not say that uh, 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 for you can vanquish 
all our offenses and sinful reactions incurred in life ganga devi if you take bath in ganga she can take all our sins away and liberate us from sinful reactions but yamuna she take away our offenses also so that is a beauty prabhupa translates can vanquish all our offenses and sinful reactions incurred in life whether it is rupa goswami sanatan goswami um raghunath das goswami any other goswamis they would take bath in yamuna every day shri prabhupad spent over 10 years in vrindavan he would take bath in yamuna every day so agha naam lavitri she can she, agha naam lavitri she can purify us of our offenses and of our sins then jagat shema dhatri um, jagat she is purifying she is auspicious for the whole jagat uh, shri prabhupa says um, in one of the purports that anybody who takes bath in yamuna even if they don't know the potency of yamuna they will still get bhakti in the form of agyat sukriti so if you don't do any devotional service but if you just take bath in yamuna your devotional life begins it's not just becoming free from sins but your devotional life begins and that's why she is auspicious for the whole jagat because so many people prabhupa says so many people come to vrindavan and they have no faith or they may have little faith but they don't know anything about krishna consciousness but they are pious people so they take bath in river yamuna thinking this is a holy river and through that their bhakti begins agya sukriti um, and knowingly and without knowing also they get relieved from their sufferings from their sinful as soon as you come out of yamuna you feel very purified because the loads of burden of karma on our head for our sinful activities that accumulate she takes away so in that way she is jagat shema dhatri she is auspicious um um prabhupa says you are the creator of all auspicious things for the world the world becomes auspicious dear yamuna just by your presence um um and it is said that um there is a past time in one of the puranic one of the puranic literature by ved vyas that because sun god sun god sun is yamaraj and sun god daughter is yamuna so yamuna and uh, sun god are brothers and sisters naturally this is kalindi the um the the daughter of sun god but there is an instance where uh, one of the puranic story where yamuna um birthday which is on the second day of the month of kartik when she appeared the yamuna birthday um, and uh, she held a huge feast um, and invited her brother yamaraj and yamaraj came and yamaraj was very happy and uh, yamaraj said uh, i am very happy with you sister little sister um, ask for a benediction and uh, yamuna said whoever take bath in you never have to see you <laughs> so yamuna said all right whoever takes bath in you never sees me so in that way in and in many many other ways she is auspicious just by her presence everybody knowingly unknowingly makes spiritual progress just by the presence of yamuna and it is the same yamuna which has descended from golok vrindavan um, devotees pure devotees of the lord preman jana chori ra bhakti vilochana when their eyes are anointed with love of god they can see radha and krishna and cowherd boys and cows past times in in yamuna even today um prabhupa said the water of yamuna cannot be contaminated although externally there may it may be carrying dust and chemicals and other things because of kali yuga but a pure devotee can see it um in her pure spiritual form like you see in a picture the yamuna is very beautiful and very welcoming even the fishes in yamuna during krishna's they are all completely transcendental and spiritual because they have taken shelter of yamuna and when the fishes would just go up look at radha and krishna and with their glance they would invite radha and krishna please come please come these are daily pastimes of krishna every day 
Krishna plays water sports in Yamuna <laughs> eternally. When we are here for first 11 years and in Golopinda one. Um, and these pastimes are connected to Yamuna. Another place which has a very high significance is Radha Kund. But taking bath in Radha Kund is the highest, but it takes a qualification. No material desires, permission of Guru. Um, it's not easy to take bath in Radha Kund. Uh, but to take bath in Yamuna, there is no such restriction. <laughs> so you cannot take bath in <laughs> Radha Kund, that's all. Like, take bath in Yamuna and she will create huge auspiciousness for you. As long as we are in Vrindavan, it's nice to take bath as frequently as possible. It is said anybody who sees Yamuna, just sees Yamuna, they become so strong that they can develop strength to control their senses because senses are like snakes always demanding so much sense gratification just by seeing Yamuna give that pleasure give that benefit so Jagat Shema Dhatri Pavitri Kriyano Pavitri Kriyano please purify us so this is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, in a mood of a devotee he is offering prayers to Yamuna and the moment Mahaprabhu saw Yamuna he became ecstatic and um, in such a concise verse, when Mahaprabhu speaks something like a glorification, it has lots of meaning. Every word is loaded with uh, um, many deeper understandings. I mean, I read probably, um, I don't know, lot a lot on um, Yamuna and just an explanation of this one verse that much condensed is Mahaprabhu's words um, and same with Sikshashtakam um, eight verses that Mahaprabhu spoke there are hundreds of pages of commentaries by Bhakti Vinod Thakur by Saraswati Thakur because of time constraints the Prabhupada could not write a commentary on Sikshashtakam um, he could not even finish Srimad Bhagavatam because he has very less time. Uh, but there is explanation on Sishakashtakam, deeper meanings of Sishakashtakam by our Acharyas. <clears throat> it is said that anybody who reads Sishakashtakam every day, their devotion increases day by day. Um, so, Pavitri Kriya no Vapur Mitra Putri. Um, or daughter of Putri, O Putri, or daughter of Sun God, kindly purify us by your pious activities. Pavitri Kriyano. So, Mahaprabhu came to Yamuna and he became ecstatic. <laughs> and he removed his clothes wearing copying and he jumped, immediately jumped into the water. And then he came out of the water and very rushingly, Advaita Charya on his boat with new set of coping and uh, new set of sannyas cloth <laughs> is rowing the boat coming to us Lord Chaitanya after reciting this mantra Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered obeisances and took his bath in the Ganges actually it was <laughs> Ganga and Yamuna mix we will see that uh, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was standing there without a second garment he was just without clothes just wearing coping <laughs> no other garment <laughs> Sri Advaita Charya arrived in boat bringing with him new underwear and uh, uh, external garments, sannyas clothes. Lord Chaitanya, why have you come here? How do you know I am in Vrindavan? <laughs> Advaita Charya, where you are, that is Vrindavan. Jaha <laughs> tumi say Vrindavan. Wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. Um, and we discuss about Vrindavan. Vrindavan, um, um, it, wherever a pure devotee goes, because Vrindavan is always in the heart of pure devotee, that place also becomes Vrindavan. And this is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, and wherever the deity of Krishna is there, they are all, Prabhupada said, all of my temples are Vrindavan. Say to me, say Vrindavan. Wherever you are, that is Vrindavan. Now it is my great fortune that you have come to the bank of Ganges. And uh, Mahaprabhu took a pause and I already offered prayers to Yamuna, became ecstatic in that mood. And then Advaita Charya said, Welcome, welcome to Ganga. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took a pause and then considered what happened. <laughs> what just did what just happened? <laughs> and Mahaprabhu became externally unhappy. And Mahaprabhu said, Nimai has cheated me. He told me this is Yamuna. 
and advaitacharya and nimai advaitacharya nityananda prabhu have a very sweet relationship and advaitacharya um chaitanya bhagavat describe in detail about different pastimes of advaitacharya nityananda prabhu in adi leela but we have not discussed that because our focus is chaitanya charitamrita uh, but now onwards the pastimes will be in more detail um, unlike before advaitacharya my lord nitai has not cheated you actually the western side of the river is yamuna and the eastern side is ganga hence this is actually yamuna um propan mentions in the purport in alabad ganga and yamuna and saraswati meet and then from alabad um they continue and they come to bengal radhadesh so because from the west side yamuna and east side ganga they both meet um and uh, i did my uh, bachelor's in alabad so i went to that place of sangam sangam is where three sangam where all the three rivers meet where kumbh mela happens um one is they both are very very completely different color where ganga and yamuna meet together one is coming from uh, vrindavan and ganga is coming from its own course haridwar and through that course and then they both meet the two sisters meet in um in alabad and then they continue and they go all the way to bengal and then um, they also go to uh, eka chakra mayapur and um, on another note it is described that uh, the ganga in mayapur where shri chaitanya mahaprabhu passed time performed his past times has the same potency as yamuna in vrindavan but other part of ganga are unlike that but just the part in navadvip ganga um, has the same potency as yamuna to give love of god <clears throat> so hence my lord nita has not cheated you this is actually yamuna um prema veshe tina dina acha upavas advaita charya knows everything nita sent to acharya ratna and he told everything to advaita charya um prema veshe tina dina acha upavas teen din my lord for three days mahaprabhu didn't even know how many days have passed lost in ecstatic love tina dina acha upavas you have been fasting my lord for three days aji mora ghare bhiksha chala mora vas please accept some food ab um, um a sanyasi is meant to go and beg home to home so aji um, today मोरा घरे भिक्षा चला मोरा वास प्लीज कम टू माई होम एंड एक्सेप्ट भिक्षा देयर एंड एक्सेप्ट सम प्रसाद देयर यू हैव नॉट टेकन फूड फॉर पास थ्री डेज अद्वैत आचार्य सेड यू हैव बीन फास्टिंग कंटिन्यूसली फॉर थ्री डेज इन योर एक्सटैटिक इन योर एक्सटेसी ऑफ लव फॉर कृष्णा प्रेम आवेश आई इन्वाइट यू टू माई होम वे यू कैन काइंडली टेक योर आर्म्स योर भिक्षा कम विद मी टू माई रेसिडेंस एंड देन advaitacharya is trying to mahaprabhu may say no i have taken sanyas i am going to go i cannot come to your home i i know you will feed me very nicely i am a sanyasi i am supposed to be very austere so mahaprabhu may be having this feeling so advaitacharya was not willing to let mahaprabhu go so advaitacharya said advaita prabhu continued at my home i have just cooked one palm full of rice just this much rice i have um the vegetables are always very simple we are brahmanas and we are old so just little vegetable there is no luxurious cooking simply a little liquid sabji and spinach spinach is very common there it's also called uh, shakta spinach is very common in bengal i stayed for 3 months in uh, uh, in mayapur every day morning breakfast and lunch they all, they gave me spinach and actually i was really bored with spinach <laughs> because uh, you know we are we were not so used to it uh, but spinach is people who are born in bengal they take this uh, this shakta or shakha various kind of spinach very frequently mm-hmm. on god purnima day we we cook spinach any kind of spinach leafy vegetables ma prabhu would love that from being from bengal that's why in mayapur the birthplace of chitan shri chitan ne mahaprabhu spinach is cooked cooked every day there is no luxurious cooking simply a little liquid vegetable and spinach and a palm full of rice and you are a sanyasi it's fitting to you 
and you are asking bhiksha i mean you ask bhiksha as your duty please come to my home and take it hence sri advaita took the lord into the boat mahaprabhu dressed himself up with fresh garments then he sat with nitai in the boat with mukunda achary ratna already left um achary ratna is right now in navadweep and he is informing sachi mat and everybody come come chalo 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 half an hour drive from mayapur um the home of sri chetane mahaprabhu half an hour 40 minutes drive is shantipur so it takes probably a day or many hours so achary ratna is still arranging but in the meantime advaita acharya got the chance to serve mahaprabhu so sri advaita acharya took the lord into the boat and brought the lord to his residence with great happiness actually advaita acharya was also with his wife in mayapur every day advaita acharya would have past times with uh, sri chetane mahaprabhu uh, but when mahaprabhu went to take sanyas advaita acharya could not take it and then he moved to his residence in shantipur it was in shantipur that uh, uh, advaita acharya worshiped ganga with shaligram to invite krishna invite lord chetanya um, to give love of god to the whole world um, and when nimai pandit was born um, advaita acharya vai shita thakurani came to see the new born baby in the house of jagannath mishra and um, advaita acharya was very much attracted and then advaita acharya moved to navadeep mayapur and then again he moved back to shantipur so please come to my residence um, um, and uh, he took mahaprabhu nityananda prabhu and with great happiness he seated them in his boat that sri chetan mahaprabhu is coming to my home now today um, now lord chetan access prasad at the house of um, advaita advaita acharya lot of spelling mistakes all the eatables were first cooked by the wife of advaita acharya then shila advaita acharya personally offered everything um, to lord vishnu um, so this time sachi mata cooked but we will see in later on and th- um, this time sita thakurani the wife of advaita acharya cooked but later on we will see sachi mata cooked the remaining meals when she came here she will come to see chetanya mahaprabhu and the first meeting after sanyas we will see next week um um so she cooked prabhupa says in the purport this is the ideal householder's life the wife at home cooks a variety of foods for lord vishnu and they offer the food the husband offers it to the deity after that the aarti is performed and the prasadam is distributed prabhupa says in my childhood i have actually seen my father receive not less than four guests every day this is like vedic culture um um sir um, prabhupa's father god mohan de every day he would invite at least four sadhus in his home every day and whoever come he would ask them please bless that my child may become a dear servant of shrimati radharani that was the mood of god mohan de prabhupa said my father was a pure devotee of the lord for hours every day god mohan de with his wife would worship Uh, the deities of radha krishna that was the house so prabhupa says the best way you can raise your children is you become a sincere devotee when kids see you worshiping deities um you going to temple you um in taking interest in bhagavatam and gita um you serving in a temple um that is the best impression that they are getting right now we don't see but when they are married and they have their own kids they will tell their husband my father used to do this and my mother used to do this and they were great devotees of the lord so that is the best culture even if they don't take up krishna consciousness today this impressions that they are gaining they remember everything um so sri prabhupad was very proud of his father gaur mohan de if someone comes the householder offers him prasadam and if there is not much left he should offer his own portion to the guest thus the householder's life is also a kind of austerity householder prabhupa says in vedic culture will go out in vedic culture now i don't know how that applies but they would go out and call is anybody hungry is anybody hungry and then he would feed them and if there is not enough he would feed all he he or she the householder family have um even if there's nothing remaining for them and that's an austerity 
for a household life. Every human life is meant for austerity. Every ashram is meant for some or the other kind of austerity. <clears throat> we see many examples of uh, um, Ranti Dev. <laughs> uh, uh, such examples are there in Shrimad Bhagavatam who fasted for, I don't know, one month or one year at the verge of death and dogs came and he gave in charity. He was the king, the last remnants remaining and he gave them to the dogs and chandalas or anybody who would come to beg. So there is a principle of austerity there. If food is prepared for Krishna and offered to him and the Vaishnavas, the stock is increased, never decreased. This was the Prabhupada desire for his temples. So Prabhupada says, if you feed guests, if you feed devotees, um, then don't worry that there will be scarcity in your home. Especially, I mean, I know devotees living um, in US do not have this problem, but many homes in India are very poor and they hardly have sufficient rice and vegetables for themselves. So Krishna provides, actually all that takes is a desire. Krishna provides, especially with respect to temples. Prabhupada said, temples, anybody comes, they should have a nice prasadam. One of the uh, letter Prabhupada says, uh, cook lot of puris and sabjis. I don't know how we apply to our Farmington temple this thing, but it's in my mind always. Prabhupada said, cook lot of puris and sabjis. Anybody come, they should get halwa, puri, sabji. Every guest should get a full meal. This is right now in US. In US, there is only one temple, Seattle Temple, um, which all the congregation, they go to the temple and they take food there. They all work in Microsoft, most of them. Morning breakfast is available for everybody. Afternoon, evening, any guest come gets a full meal. That was Prabhupada's mood. Um, Prabhupada says, don't worry. Krishna will provide. And it's all a matter of desire. If we have a desire to feed, 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 Prabhupada says, Krishna will provide you. Um, everything required. Don't have to worry about where grains will come, where money will come. Krishna will arrange. <clears throat> the cooked food now again prashadam time the cooked food was divided into three portions so advaita acharya sita thakurani they already knew, received the news from acharya ratna they made an elaborate feast uh, not just rice and shark and one vegetable palm full of rice we will see that so the cooked food was divided into three portions one was arranged on a metal plate and the other two were arranged on a plantain leaves. Um, the leaves were not bifurcated and they were taken from a banana tree that had at least 32 bunches of bananas. The two leaves were filled very nicely with the kinds of food described below. So Vedic culture is all glorious. Cooking is done in uh, earthen pots, um, um, there is a metal plate there, but only for Krishna. For all the devotees, for general use, they will eat in a plantain leaves, which is a leaf. Big banana tree has a very big leaf, which is not broken into two or there is no holes like that. So plantain leaf. And uh, so easy to discard, so easy to decompose. And even the taste enhances by eating in plantain leaf. I mean, our culture is so nice that it's very important to regain. Um, and even the bowls were made of the stem from the banana tree. Everything is made from uh, plants. And when you discard, it rains and it immediately merges. There is no such trash like plastic and uh, so many things for uh, prashadam. The cooked rice was... Um, stack of very fine grains nicely cooked and in the middle was yellow clarified butter there is a 
every plate has a hill of rice with lot of clarified butter um, from the milk of cows. Surrounding the stack of rice were pots made of skins of banana trees. And in those pots, there were varieties of vegetables and moong dal. There were patola, squash, manakachu, various kinds of spinach, five kinds of bitter and pungent shaktas, which is again leafy vegetables, bitter melon mixed with all kinds of vegetables, eggplant fried with the leaves of nimba trees, dal preparation, kushmanda, manachaki, various preparations made with coconut pulp mixed with curd, rock candy, curry made of banana leaves, squash boiled in milk, small cakes in sweet and sour sauces, five to six kind of sour preparations, all in great quantity, soft cakes made with moong dal, soft cakes made with ripe bananas, soft cakes made with ulad dal, various kinds of sweet meats, condensed milk with rice cakes, a coconut preparation, and every kind of cake desirable. All around the three plates were a hundred pots filled with various kinds of vegetables. This was how Advaita Charya's eagerness to serve the Lord. Um, there is big plantain leaf, mountain of rice with clarified butter and hundreds of pot and the food was divided. There were three such sections, um, various kinds of vegetables. In earthen pot, there were, so there were also earthen pot other than banana stem pots, which earthen pots, there were uh, sweet rice mixed with ghee many many of these preparations we don't know because they are common in bengali uh, prabhupada said our cooks who are writing cookbooks should write recipes find out and describe recipes for uh, these um, um, these items recipes for them and prabhupada says that we can also see the way krishna's kaviraj goswami is describing how great cook he must be, how much knowledge he has for cooking. So great detail he mentions. Condensed milk, yogurt, sandesh with curd and banana, chipped rice mixed with milk and bananas. In this, it is not possible to describe all the preparations that were made. There were also pots with the scented rose water. So very carefully, both Sita Thakurani and Advaita Charya uh, made huge arrangements for Chitanya Mahaprabhu's prasadam after three days of fasting. Thus, Lord Krishna was offered all the food and the Lord took it very pleasantly. Um, so all the three plates with, the, um, um, with all the bowls of vegetables, sweets and dals and spinach and everything, everything was offered to Lord Krishna along with metal plate and a plantain plate. And the Lord took it very pleasantly. Lord was very happy. Um, to see Krishna is offered such nice food. Advaita Prabhu asked the two brothers, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, to come and see the Arati. So after the food was offered to the Lord, everything, um, food was taken out and uh, Advaita Charya invited Mahaprabhu Nityananda Prabhu to, uh, for the Arati performance. The two lords and all the present went to see the Arti ceremony. Haridas Thakur was also there. Haridas Thakur was close associate of Advaita Charya. If you go to Shantipur, not far away from Shantipur is um, the Bhajan Kutli of Haridas Thakur, where he would stay. And it is there near Shantipur where uh, Maya Devi herself came to test uh, Haridas through her beauty. That area is called, many devotees go there to pray to, there is a deity of Durga Devi there, uh, Maya Devi, to pray to her to please protect me from the attractions from this material world. So that place is there just 10 minutes away from Shantipur. So Haridas Thakur was there. Mukunda came with the Lord. Uh, Acharya Ratna went to Navadeep. So Mukunda is there. Nita is there. Advaita Charya is there. And his wife is there, Sita Thakurani. These people are present in the home. Then the two brothers, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu were invited to honor the prasadam. So then um, um, after it is offered, Aarti is performed. Then Advaita Charya asked Mahaprabhu and Nitai, um, to enter into the room where the prasadam was already arranged. 
uh, all the three plates with all the balls as it is were kept were kept there मुकुंद हरिदास दुई प्रभु बलाईला योदा हाथे दुई जना कहिते लागिला द टू ब्रदर्स कॉल्ड मुकुंदा एंड हरिदास टू ब्रदर्स महाप्रभु नित्यानंद प्रभु दे कॉल्ड फॉर मुकुंदा एंड हरिदास हरिदास ठाकुर टू कम विद देम हाउएवर मुकुंदा एंड हरिदास बोथ विद फोल्डेड हैंड स्पोक एज फॉलोस मुकुंदा सबमिटेड माय डियर सर आई हैव समथिंग टू डू um that is not yet finished later i shall accept the prashadam so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was very welcoming and uh, he in he treated everybody as on a equal level so he would invite uh, um mukunda please come and join us for prashadam haridas please come and join us for prashadam but they did not feel themselves qualified to take on a prashadam with the um with the lord Sometimes a spiritual master asks his disciples, "Ki please come and take prasadam with me." But a disciple should not be so foolish to sit with the spiritual master and take prasadam. <laughs> He should rather serve the spiritual master. Um, so Mukunda said, "My Lord, I have something to do. I have to take care of something. I will take prasadam later." Lord understood and Lord said, "Okay." And Hari Das Thakur, Hari Das ka he muni papista dama. Hari Das is always in that mood. <laughs> बाहिरे एक मुश्ती पाचे करीमु भोजन हरिदास ठाकुर सेड आई एम मोस्ट फॉल इन एंड लोएस्ट एमंग मेन लेटर आई सेल ईट वन पामफुल ऑफ प्रसादम वाइल वेटिंग आउटसाइड सो प्रभुपा डिस्क्राइब इन द पर्पोर्ट हरिदास ठाकुर एक्सटर्नली वॉज बॉर्न इन अ मुस्लिम फैमिली द यावनास आर कंसिडर्ड लाइक ब्राह्मण क्षत्रिय वैश्य शूद्र एंड देन कम्स मलेचस एंड यावनास so i mean we are not caste conscious but at the same time genuine humility of uh, haridas thakur he considered himself a yamana yavana a muslim so he don't want to eat with the the lord even with advaita acharya and others he would not eat um, instead it is described that uh, as a matter of custom um, they would not eat in the home also rather they would uh, eat outside the home in one corner so that's how um, that was a culture of kind of um, um, that was a system at that point of time lord chaitanya mahaprabhu um, um, um lord chaitanya mahaprabhu accepted the sentiment of haridas thakur he was not like forcing he didn't want to hurt haridas thakur he accepted it. and on the same basis Haridas Thakur, when he moved to Puri, he considered himself unqualified, being taken birth in a low born um, to Jagannath Puri, and uh, Mahaprabhu accepted his sentiments. He didn't force him, and instead, Mahaprabhu will bring prasadam for Haridas Thakur every day. He created Siddha Bakula tree. He cried very intense past time Haridas Thakur passing away, but Lord accepted the sentiment of his devotees. Um, and propa says then although haridas thakur was in an exalted position and equal to other great vaishnavas in fact he is one of the best vaishnavas um um and vaishnavas are beyond all these things um he yet he considered himself a papishta a most sinful man um and adhama uh, the lowest among men although a vaishnav may be very advanced spiritually he keeps himself externally humble and submissive so one should follow um, one one may be very advanced um um the sign of advancement the more actually one advances he feels himself very low of himself he seem he feels himself others are better than me um 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 and he remains submissive and humble um so haridas thakur now prabhupad also says that a devotee knows his advancement a devotee we know where we are in our krishna consciousness um so that's why prabhupad uses the word externally humble now internally also a devotee always remain humble but he is yet confident about um, about his own um about where he stands and he is very submissive and he um yet he is not proud so there is a slight difference there okay 
<coughs> Advaita Charya took Lord Nityananda Prabhu and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu within the room and the two lords saw the arrangement of the prashadam. So Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was special. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu, when he entered the room, he saw two plantain leaves, one metal plate, so many vegetables divided into three sections, all of them, hundreds of preparations. And Mahaprabhu was confused. Why this arrangement? Why not just one plate offered to Krishna? Why so much? But Mahaprabhu could not understand the intention of Advaita Charya. Um, so, but he was very pleased. And why was he pleased? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was specially very pleased and spoke, frankly, I will personally take the lotus feet of anyone who can offer Krishna such nice food and place those lotus feet on my head, birth after birth. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased to see such night nice food stuff was offered to Krishna. Um, a devotee, like in Jagannath Puri, the devotee who cooks, there is a rule that he should not eat if he cooks. So that uh, he is cooking. So Krishna should be the center. Uh, even the pujari who is offering food to Krishna, he should be a little careful um, that uh, um, he should become pleased and his focus should be, this is made for Krishna to eat. This is made for Mahaprabhu to eat. This is made for Guru Maharaj to eat. Um, then the food remains pure. Um, now, just like uh, um, 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 by, just like uh, um, if you start eating and uh, a beggar comes and a beggar is very hungry and beggar looks at your food and your, your plate has gulab jamun and rasgulla, then beggar would become very um, envious. Beggar would see at the food and he would think, I am not able to eat or I am not able to eat now. So because beggar has the desire to enjoy, of course, we are all beggar. Just an example. Likewise, when we see the plate and then we think, uh, um, oh, I will enjoy this prashada after 20 minutes. Wow, I'm waiting for it. Um, then we should try to avoid that consciousness. It's a training. We should try. Rather, we should train ourselves. Um, oh, today is a nice offering made for Krishna. We should try to <laughs> see in that way. And Mahaprabhu, when he saw the food, there was no consciousness, although he was hungry for three days. Now, we may be hungry <laughs> for a few hours only. Mahaprabhu was, had not eaten anything for three days. But when he saw, his consciousness was... Anybody who offers such nice food stuff to Krishna, um, I will place his feet on my head and worship him birth after birth. So that was the mood of Mahaprabhu. Another thing is Mahaprabhu appreciated another's devotion. So we should also, when a, a devotee especially, um, um, as he becomes purified, when he sees others' devotion, he glorifies that. Even if he does not glorify personally, just to make the other person doesn't become proud. In the heart, he glorifies the other person. Oh, this devotee has such nice devotion. He he chants his rounds early in the morning. He um, he um, he or she, whoever, um, is spreading Krishna consciousness so nicely. Um, 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 he has such good control over his senses. He or she. Um, um, He's always so much willing to serve. Um, he's stretching himself to serve Krishna so much. So when our devotee sees the devotion in others, um, then the devotee becomes very pleased, very pleased. Um, um, and that pleases Krishna. In fact, uh, Krishna says that when, when, we, when we become happier by seeing others going in Krishna consciousness, then Krishna becomes very happy with us. <clears throat> in fact, that's the most Shri Prabhupada recommended for us. And Shri Prabhupada himself said, when he saw his uh, uh, disciples extending themselves so much, always accepting whatever Prabhupada says, uh, and uh, um, uh, trying to spread the glories of Krishna consciousness, in Prabhupada's humility, Prabhupada thought um, that these devotees are my spiritual master. They are much better than me. Um, I should learn from them. 
um so they are very beautiful these are the ornaments of a devotee um there is another story of uh, kuresh in uh, shri sampradaya kuresh and ramanujacharya kuresh was exalted devotee he even lost his eyes for the purpose of his spiritual master ramanujacharya and one time kuresh went not going in detail of his story but just one line one time kuresh went to see um 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 uh, in um in rangana temple kuresh went and uh, ranganath asked him um, what can i do and kuresh said my lord um i am um, not i am i am done with this material world please take me back to vaikuntha and uh, uh, ranganath said uh, um, kuresh what are you talking what about you not only you anybody who is connected to you i will take him back to god it also because i am so pleased with your devotion ramanujacharya heard anybody connected to kuresh will also go back to god it and ramanujacharya started dancing he became ecstatic that uh, kuresh is my disciple so <laughs> i'm connected to kuresh so if kuresh goes back to god it i will also go back to god it by his mercy so one should appreciate others devotion um but when there is envy in the heart then instead of appreciating others devotion when somebody when, then then we act on ego and then we act on envy when somebody is when we see somebody else's devotion then we think uh, we find some fault in that or we glorify us somebody is singing very nicely then one option is wow he is such a nice devotee he has so much devotion for the lord but when there is envy then we say um so what today he may be um doing very nice but i know who he is or i know what his um, what his real nature are so envy or ego cannot appreciate others um because those people are so full of appreciating themselves when ego is there then i mean i am full of it but i am just sharing so that i am telling to myself so that i can work on it so when ego is there that person just tries to bring himself in the center always himself in the center um and he gets he he makes so many conclusions keeping himself in the center he don't see any situation outside of him <laughs> and we get and we make so many conclusions all this is not going to speak more on this but prabhupa says i mean the nature of this material world janasa mohayam aham amiti we are centered around i me and mine um, but here we see shri chaitanya mahaprabhu appreciating the devotion of advaita acharya to what extent anybody who offers food to krishna with so much devotion like this i will take the dust of their feet on my head birth after birth so this is the mood that mahaprabhu is carrying um um when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu entered the room he saw three divisions of food and he knew that all of these were meant for krishna because he saw that all the three were offered to krishna however he did not understand the intention of acharya why three plates i mean it's obvious to us <laughs> planting two leaves are for mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu but chaitanya mahaprabhu cannot think of that he is just confused why advaita offered in three <laughs> anyways um <laughs> that's all right he just offered in three and mahaprabhu did not say anything so lord chaitanya mahaprabhu sat down and he asked uh, advaita bring two plantain leaves so mahaprabhu's mood was bring a leaf i will take little rice and little sabji one little rice and little sabji and that's done for me <laughs> so that's what mahaprabhu thought so he asked for another two two banana leaves for himself and nitai um saying let us have a little quantity of vegetable and rice advaita acharya said just sit down here on these seats and the seats were next to the two big plates with hundreds of preparations and rice and sweet rice and earthen pots and he said ma prabhu just sit down here and nita you sit down here so he caught hold their hand and he made them sit down sit down there <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, beautiful conversation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, "It is not proper, Advaita, for a sannyasi to eat such a varieties of food. I mean, hundreds of items. <laughs> If he does, how can he control his senses? 
Prabhupad calls their Vacho Vegam, Manasa Krodha Vegam, um, and Jiva Vegam, Uttara Prastha Vegam. Uh, one cannot become a spiritual master unless tongue is controlled, uh, genitals, belly, mind, anger, they are controlled. Um, uh, so how can um, um, how can he become a proper sannyasi? I just took sannyas three days back. <laughs> Wait, I'm a, I'm a bhikshu. I'm a beggar. <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> offering with this? Advaita Charya, uh, please give up your concealment. Concealment means hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means, I know you are the supreme personality of Godhead, but you are hiding yourself. You are trying to deceive me. Give up your deception. Give up your concealment. I know who you are. And I know the confidential meaning of your accepting the sannyas order. Don't try to trick me, my Lord. Um, the Lord replied, I certainly ca cannot eat <laughs> so much food. Mahaprabhu just took a position that he understands Advaita. And he doesn't want to argue on that. <laughs> that yes, <laughs> I am who I am and you know who I am. So Mahaprabhu knows that. Um, but he said, but suddenly I cannot eat so much food. Advaita Charya then requested the Lord to simply accept the prasadam without pretense um, if he could not eat it all the balance could be left on the plate okay whatever you cannot eat leave it and that is the glory of Advaita <laughs> that I will get all the maha maha prasad Prabhupada says there maha maha prasad is higher than maha prasad um, um, and we know bhakta pada dhuli bhakta arajal bhakta bhukta avashesha tino mahabal Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I will not be able to eat so much food and it is not a duty of sannyasi to leave remnants. I cannot leave remnants and I cannot eat this. <laughs> so, Advaita, you have put him in problem. <clears throat> Acharya bole nila achale khau chavan bar eka bare anna kao shata shata bar. <laughs> Acharya said, nila chale in nila chal Khau chauvan bar. Chauvan is 54 in Hindi. Chauvan. Nila chale khau chauvan bar. <laughs> you can eat 54 times in Nila chale. Eka bare anna khau. Sata sata bar. Sata means 100. Eka bar anna khau. In every meal, sata sata bar, you eat hundreds and hundreds of pots. And hundreds of hundreds of pots in each meal. And you eat that chauvan bar. <laughs> Mahaprabhu has no argument. Upon saying this, Advaita Charya supplied water to the two lords so that they could wash their hands. In Vedic culture, you carry a pot and you wash your hand before and you wash your hand later on also. Even in in India, in when I used to go with my parents, brother, to restaurants, they would bring a bowl of hot water and lemon so you can wash your hands. So, But in Vedic culture also, this was the case. So Advaita Chai brought a bowl, washed their hands. The two lords then sat down and smiling began to eat the prasad. <laughs> now what will Mahaprabhu say? So Mahaprabhu sat down and he started on the ring. So this is the last few minutes. Just we will finish this uh, prasadam pastime. <clears throat> Nityanda Prabhu said, I have undergone fasting for three days continuously. Today I had hoped to break my fast. I was thinking, oh, Three days I am fasting, I'll get something. So implying that what you have provided me is not even compared to a morsel, Advaita. Can you not take care of, take care of me properly? Advaita Charya, sir, you are a mendicant traveling on pilgrimage. You are a beggar. First of all, you're a mendicant, you're a beggar. Sometimes you eat fruits and roots. Sometimes you simply go on fasting. Uh, I am a poor Brahmana. You have come to my home. Please be satisfied with whatever little food you have received and give up your greedy mentality. This is the joking pastime between Advaita and Nitai. They always have such a loving relationship. Actually, we can also have loving relationship with devotees and can joke with them. But make sure when you joke with them, you make sure that they don't feel bad about your joke. If, you, if they feel bad about your joke, you will commit an offense. So see how far the friendship has gone if after joking if you see them feeling bad then means the relationship has not grown so far between the two devotees that we can do something like that um, Advaita and Nita has a very deep relationship they both are criticizing each other and they are deriving great bliss
from criticizing each other. You are a beggar. You fast. Um, you have come here, so implying whatever I should supply, you should you should be happy with that. And then uh, I'm I'm poor, Nita. <laughs> you know, a brahmana doesn't work. He just begs. So I'm offering to you whatever I could, <laughs> and be satisfied with whatever little, and don't become greedy so much, um, Nita. Whatever I may be, you have invited me. Therefore, you must supply as much as I want to eat. So these pastimes continue between the Lord and devotees. Advaita Charya, I can understand that your business is to give troubles to brahmanas. You have come here simply to give me trouble. You can eat ten or twenty manas. One mana is forty kilo. So twenty mana is eight hundred kilo. So in a way, jokingly, you can eat. I mean, <laughs> Nita actually can eat. You can eat ten or eight eight hundred kilos of rice also. But I am a poor brahmana. How shall I get so much rice? Whatever you have, though it be a palmful of rice, please eat it and get up. <laughs> This is what I have. Eat and that's it. <laughs> that's and then get up. A mata hasya hasya rase kare na bhojana arda arda khana prabhu. Like this, uh, laughingly, Mahaprabhu is simply smiling and honoring, and Nitai and Advaita have their own rasa, hasya rasa, and um, they both, both the lords, Mahaprabhu and Nitai were eating. In fact, there is a verse where Mahaprabhu told Advaita, "Come, you join us," and Advaita said, "My lord, I will serve both of you. I would like to serve both of you." So he was serving. Um, um. Ladies don't serve sannyasi, so a husband only serves. So um, Advaita had to serve. Arda arda khana prabhu chhade na vyanjana arda arda. But Mahaprabhu and Nitya and ladies they eat half half, and then um, chhade na vyanjana, and then they renounced. So each bowl, each vegetable, they eat half the quantity and they move to the next, and then they eat half of that and they move to the next, and they are continuously eating. Um, as soon as half of the vegetable in the pot was finished, Advaita Charya filled it up again. In this way, as the Lord finished half of the preparation, Advaita again and again filled it up. After filling a pot with vegetables, Advaita Charya requested them to eat more, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, "How much more um, can I go on eating?" Advaita Charya, please do not give up whatever I have already given you. Now, whatever I am giving. You may eat half and leave the half. Um, so, as half is over, Advaita will fill it up in great quantities. They both cooked. I don't know <laughs> how much effort they since when they started to cook huge quantities. They cooked half is over. They fill the half. Mahaprabhu will become externally very upset, and he is like, "Now this is one behavior of Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu is always surrendered to his devotees." We will see this very wonderful. Ma Prabhu himself told Shuklambar Brahmachari, "Do not retaliate and do not demand." This was the personal behavior of Ma Prabhu. Uh, whatever devotees will tell Ma Prabhu to do, Ma Prabhu will submit. So Ma Prabhu will express, and then he will try to give his reasons, which are bona fide from the Vedic perspective. And then when devotees will defeat him, Ma Prabhu will accept defeat. Same behavior, Krishna. Whenever somebody becomes upset with Krishna, whenever Radharani becomes upset with Krishna, Krishna is the first person to take a humble position. Krishna cries. Krishna takes the dust. So when we understand the quality of Krishna, same as quality of Mahaprabhu, because I mean same personality, very submissive, always in that in that mood of whatever devotees say. But Mahaprabhu is like becoming little upset. You are filling it up. I mean, how long will it go on? Your quantity is unlimited. How long? So Mahaprabhu said, "Advaita, enough. <laughs> Whatever you are doing, I am trying to do enough." Then Lord said, "My Lord, now I have already given you this much more. So now eat half of this more and leave the rest, and then you can go." Um, in this way, by submitting various humble requests, Advaita Acharya made Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu eat. Thus, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fulfilled all the desires of Advaita. um mahaprabhu this is one of the quality of mahaprabhu we, when we hear about lord by hearing about krishna and by hearing about lord chaitanya we start under we start understanding their personalities 
we cannot understand now there is nam rup guna lila nam is the names of the lord are all powerful the form of the lord is all powerful then gunas guna or qualities manifest through the past times of the lord when we hear about the lord we start understanding the lord's personality and then some of the qualities of the lord will start impressing us will start oh krishna is like this chaitanya mahaprabhu is like this and that increases our attraction just like when a young boy sees a young girl if the girl is very proud the, although she may be very beautiful the young boy may be partially attracted to her but if the girl has doesn't have that much beauty but if she is very submissive and humble i mean i don't know how it works but the if she has certain qualities then the qualities creates attraction qualities attract us so when we um, hear the lord past time the lord personality comes out and those quality attract us and at an advanced stage of chanting the lord qualities will start manifesting in our heart that's why there is so much importance given in hearing krishna katha i mean what does krishna say in bhagavad gita um, both ayanti parasparam devotees come together and discuss about me now at one point of time we need to discuss lot of philosophy to understand uh, is krishna god by chanting of the holy names but as we grow as our faith grow our next level of nourishment comes from krishna katha comes from hearing about the past times of the lord because initially we need to convince our intellect to understand how to grow what is the best way what to do what not to do but the nourishment comes from um, direct krishna katha so these discussion of chaitanya charitamrita is not necessarily meant to um for the philosophy all the philosophy is embedded in chaitanya charitamrita but they are more so meant to understand the lord develop an attraction for the lord understand the qualities of the lord and uh, receive nourishment just from hearing the past times of the lord <clears throat> so thus chaitanya mahaprabhu fulfilled all the desires of advaita char and we will see sometime mahaprabhu will be very grave and say no and reject but most of the time in some circumstances and we will see that if that is lord's plan otherwise whatever devotees will say mahaprabhu will submit like a salt and submit to the devotees nitanande kahe amar peta na bharila lana yaha tora anna kichu na khaila i have not eaten anything tora anna kichu na khaila i have not eaten anything and whatever is this amara pet na bharila again nityananda prabhu jokingly said my belly is not yet filled up please take away your food and just like krishna he ate makhan and then he offered to all the monkey and then he said eh hey, this is tasteless and rejected and threw and broke break the pot <laughs> and that's when he will run away so these are the past days of krishna and these are past days of nitai <laughs> he ate to his full satisfaction and he said take it away it is useless i have not eaten the least of it, it is useless because adwait already filled everything and he said this is all useless take it away after saying this nitanda prabhu took a handful of rice and threw it on the floor in front of him as if he were angry this is all useless he took a he took some rice and threw it on the floor in 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 man anger in acted anger in feigned fake anger थ्रोन राइस टच हिज बॉडी Advaita Charya began to dance in various ways with the rice still stuck to his body. Avadhu tera jhootha lagila lagi avadha tera jhootha lagila mora ange parama pavitra more kaila ei dhange when the rice thrown by Nityananda Prabhu noticed touched his body Advaita Charya thought himself purified by the touch of remnants 
thrown by paramahamsa nityananda therefore he began dancing so there are um, um the behavior of advaita acharya are meant for the understanding of ordinary people who are unaware of the potency of food left by bona fide spiritual master and pure vaishnavas two two things one is advaita acharya in his humility he considered that i am a smarta brahmana smartan brahman and uh, nitai is a paramhamsa avadoot uh, a manifestation of love of god and i am only a brahman so by his remnants just like um at that point of time if a muslim if a muslim jutha um, remnants of a muslim touch a hindu then hindu would um be considered as converted into muslim so advaita acharya thought that this is paramhamsa lords krishna and balaram and i am only a smarta brahmana um because nitai remnants has touched my body i have also been given the status of a paramhamsa and avadoot i have been um i have attained that much mercy and that filled advaita acharya's heart with um ecstasy and he started uh, he started dancing so it's time we will we will stop here <coughs> um i will just summarize next three four slides so we can finish this section um and then um this past time ended they both advaita acharya brought some water washed the hand of nitai and chaitanya mahaprabhu then he gave them some cloves some tulsi leaves um some cardamom to chew as a mouth freshener then they, then he took mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu to a separate room where he arranged a very nice bed for both of them and uh, he asked them to took rest he put sandalwood on their um on their forehead on their limbs he garlanded them and very beautifully he was decorated them and then advaita acharya started massaging the feet of mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu so this is a way ma advaita acharya took care of mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu but chaitanya mahaprabhu said enough advaita um you have whatever you are telling i am submitting i am surrendering to you you eat you made me eat whatever you like sandalwood hey, table we come okay sandalwood uh, um um mouth freshener bed of sleeping none of these are um acceptable by sanyasi but whatever you have given me i have accepted now let it be finished here and you call mukunda and you call haridas thakur and you all take prashadam and that's how the prashadam pastime ended here so that's all for today are there any question I think we missed Nareesh Prabhu. Yes, uh, I think maybe he is busy. Actually, I don't know. He is uh, going to India. He, oh, when is he going? He said end of this month. I'm not sure when date exactly. He is uh, vacating his house. Oh. Okay. okay, we'll end here. <clears throat>